Hey guys, how's it going? Aaron here with Double A Shaves and I am back again. So just real quick, I want I just want to thank uh, all my subscribers and just everyone who's been taking time out of their day, out of their busy day to come watch my content. Um, believe me, it just really means a lot. I know how busy we all are. And the fact that you come to watch me, subscribe and comment, believe me, it really, really means a lot. So um, thank you for your support. I really appreciate it. Uh, also, thank you to those of you who came to check out my discussion with Ben from the Soap Thing. He was nice enough to have me on his podcast, and we had an awesome discussion about uh, tub lathering versus bull lathering, as well as blades. Um, so thank you, Ben, for having me on. And if any of you guys want to check out that episode, I'll be sure to put a link to his channel, as well as the episode down in my description, if you would like to go check it out. So, uh, shave for today. I'm really, really excited about this shave because I recently got some new gear in my den from a couple fellow wet shavers here, and I'm just really, really excited to try out this stuff. So, let's go ahead and start off with the razor here. So, this is a Gem 1912. Uh, absolutely beautiful. So, I recently acquired this from my good fellow wet shaver, Elemental Hero Joe. Really awesome guy, he makes awesome content. He is a vintage razor expert and he is the one who got me into vintage razors. So thank you for all that, Joe. Um, yeah, I'll be sure to put a link to his channel if you guys wanna go check out Elemental Hero Joe. Um, he makes really awesome stuff. So just recently I told Joe that I was really, really into gems and that they really, really worked with my hair type because I have coarse hair and I find that gems are really, really efficient shavers. So. He was kind enough to send me three gems that he had in his den. He was kind enough to send them my way. So, Joe, I so much appreciate that once again. Thank you for that. And one of the ones he sent me was the Gem 1912. And, yeah, he I think he polished this one up um, at some point. It just looks really awesome. This one is from the 30s or 40s, despite being called the Gem 1912. It's not actually from 1912. This is from the 30s or 40s. Um, I think 1912 is probably just when uh, the patent happened for the gem. Um, but yeah, this one is from the 30s or 40s. And man, I just love that knurling on there. Look at that awesome design. Um, yeah, you can tell this just comes from a time where things were just made with love and the attention to detail. It just looks so cool. I just really like how vintage razors look. And the top actually kind of screws off like this. Yeah, really, really cool. Um, and then I guess this right here is, I think it's like a lather catcher type deal. Um, and then you just flip it up like that, single edge blade goes in there, and then you just kind of close it again. Um, so yeah, so I first got into gems, um, I think a few months back. So Eric from Better Every Shave, another fellow wet shaver of mine. If you've never checked out his channel, I'll be sure to link to his channel down in my description if you want to go check him out. So, so I, I first got into gems when I saw him shaving with them on his channel. He had a he had a big phase where he was really into gems, and when I saw him shaving with it, um, I was like, huh, like that looks different than any other razor I've ever seen before. I'm really interested. It kind of it kind of got my curiosity. So uh, he was kind enough a few months back to send me this one. So this is a vintage gem push button. And the reason they call it a push button model is because it goes like that, flips up, and to close it, you just go like that, and you push the button back. Uh, so this particular gem is from the 1960s, I believe. Um, and I do like the look of this one. I like that gold a lot. Um, and my first shave with it, it did not go well because I just wasn't comfortable. I didn't know what I was doing. But then some, somehow on the second shave with it, um, it just worked amazing. Like, I don't know what, I just had the angle down right. It just worked really good. Um, and yeah, I, I have coarse hair and just really, really worked well with my hair types. So Eric was kind enough to send me this one a couple months back uh, from his den. So Eric, I appreciate the vintage gem push button and for getting me into gems. So um, yeah, so ever since I've been shaving with that, I love gems and then I told Joe, he was nice enough to send me a couple more. So 
I'm just really happy to have all these in my den. So thank you guys for that. Um, yeah, and I think Joe mentioned that this gem 1912 out of the three he gave me, this is the most mild one, but I don't really care. We're just going to see how it goes. There's some kind of decent blade exposure there. So uh, yeah, we're just going to have, we're just going to see what happens with the gem 1912. I'm really excited to shave with that one today. Let me take a sip of water here. All right, so soap for today. So just recently, Eric from Eric from Better Every Shave, uh, him and I, we recently traded some soap samples, and he was actually kind enough to send me a full tub of soap from his den. So I guess he didn't like the scent. Totally okay. Um, that's just how it goes in this hobby. You either like the scents or you don't. So he was kind enough to send me the Noir at Vanille from Noble Otter. And this is actually my first full tub from Noble Otter, uh, which is kind of funny because you can argue with me all you want, um, but I always thought Noble Otter had the best soap labels in the game, like just the best, most beautiful labels. And for whatever reason, I just never got around to getting a full tub. Um, so Eric, thank you for sending me a full tub of Noble Otter. I really appreciate it. Uh, just look at that. Awesome, awesome design. And their new labels look really, really good too. Um, I think I kind of like the old ones a lot where the otter's in the middle, but hey, it's all good. The new ones are so awesome. And then this is actually one of the artisans too that puts the scent notes on the side, which is a great, great touch. Um, scent to this is really good. I'm really, really surprised by that. I'll get to that in a minute. But um, yeah, Noir at Vanille is a winner in my book. So yeah, this is an awesome, awesome soap. And then the aftershave, uh, this is a Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements sample. And I have a whole bag of these. I have a ton of these. I love having these on hand. Um, they're like a buck on the site. If there's a scent you're not sure about, you can just snag one of these and test it out. Um, and this is actually one of the ones where, this is an awesome detail. This is one of the ones where he actually put a description of the scent on the actual sample. Um, he doesn't do it for all of them. Uh, that'd be cool if, if he did. So Doug, if you ever watch this, um, I know you guys work hard. Thank you for all your hard work, but man, if you guys put these stickers of the scent on all your samples, that would be super, super sick. Um, yeah, so this one is Kiri Timati. Um, so that's, that's actually an island in the South Pacific, I believe. And that word, Kiri Timati, I think that's how you pronounce it. That actually comes from the word Christmas in English. Um, so he just recently got rid of his Christmas and fall line. And I just really wanted to snag this one because I was curious about it. So this is like a frankincense and myrrh bay rum. And it's, it smells good. Um, I'm a big fan of frankincense and myrrh, like incense and stuff. Um, and I'm a big fan of Doug's bay rums. So this one does really, really does smell good. So I'm excited for that. So yeah, it's kind of like a... It's kind of like a lemony type bay rum scent. Like frankincense kind of has that lemony touch or that lemony kind of scent in my opinion, but this one's really good, so. All right, let's check out the lather here. Got my Pereira Shea Bowl here. And this is a new brush in the den. This is the PAA Amber Aerolite. And you can't really see it. It's covered in lather here, but it's all good. Yeah, got some really, really nice hydration in here. I think I put too much water this time around, but hey, you know, Noble Otter is a good tallow soap base. I think it can take a lot of water. So looks really good there. Look at that. Yeah, nice, kind of nice and stiff. That's kind of how I like it. So, all right, so let's get around to the shave here. Too much talking for me today. <laughs> uh, ah, well. It's been a little bit since I've done a video, so nothing wrong with uh, talking a lot, updating you guys on my new gear and everything, and, you know. All right. Yeah, so, Amber Aerolite PAA Synthetic Brush. Uh, this is the first use of it, and it lost a few bristles right away, but I don't think it'll lose more bristles after that. Yep, we already got soap flying here. That's usually a good indication that I uh, 
probably overhydrated the soap, but you know what? It's all good. I think these artisan soaps can, uh, they can take a lot of water. So, uh, man, right off the bat, this Amber Aerolite brush is really soft. This is, feels really good in the face. Ah, uh, so man, the scent on the, uh, Noir A Vanille, it's kind of cool. The lather's kind of darker. I don't know if you can, it'll show up on the video, but the scent on the Noir A Vanille, I know a lot of people like this scent. Um, I used to watch a guy named Rudd Shaves back in the day, and this was like his favorite scent of all time. Um, it's, and it's just really good. This one surprises me a lot. So the scent notes on this one, which are on the side are bergamot, loose black tea, jasmine, strawberry, and vanilla. So I was never that, I was never that big of a tea guy, honestly. Um, I don't drink tea. You know, I, I'd rather just have coffee for that caffeine kick, but um, I'm not too big of a tea guy, but I must say that I am very, very pleasantly surprised by this scent because it smells very, it smells like actual loose black tea. It's very realistic. There's nothing synthetic about it. The tea note is just so nice and realistic. It's just, it's just a really nice earthy, um, black tea scent and also i i also pick up the i mainly pick up the black tea and the jasmine um i do like jasmine a lot too like i really like going to asian restaurants and whenever i they have like jasmine tea like i, I just love that taste and it's also kind of nostalgic for me you know we grew up eating going to a lot of asian restaurants and i just love that jasmine scent so the combination of the the black tea and the jasmine in here is just phenomenal. It's very, very realistic, earthy tea scent. Really, really awesome stuff. Um, and the other notes, like the bergamot, the strawberry, and vanilla, I kind of, I think they kind of act to round out the, the tea scents, um, but I don't really get them as much. I think they're, I think they're kind of round outers. Um, I mainly get the black tea and the jasmine to my nose. I know a lot of people like this scent, so if you have any thoughts on the Noir at Vanille, I'd love to hear your take on it. So I know we all kind of have different noses here. So man, I just love the how this thing looks. This Gem 1912, great grip on here. Really, really awesome knurling. Probably the coolest knurling I've ever seen. It's really, really good. Yeah, thank you again, Joe, for sending this gem my way here. Great addition to my den. So. All right, so I'm not, let's go here. I'm not too experienced with gems, but from the few times I've used them, they've just worked really well for me. So we're gonna see how this goes. So far, so good. Man, I, I'm telling you, man, I just love these gems. I love, they just work really good in my hair type. Um, that was awesome. That was awesome. All right, let's go to the other side here. It's kind of got that vintage razor type sound to it too. I did notice that a lot of vintage razors kind of have that certain sound, which I think is a cool little detail. Very, very nice. I wonder if my angle needs some work because it looks like there's still some residual soap on there, but hey, it's all good, you know. I know Joe mentioned that this one was the mildest out of the three, so it makes sense that maybe the blade isn't, you know, hitting every part of the skin, so it's all good. But man, I tell you what, the scent on, on this Noir at Vanille, even though Noble Otter is hit and miss for me, the scent is just absolutely beautiful. It's just a very, very realistic tea scent. The black tea and the jasmine, just absolutely beautiful. Um, and I try to always give my honest opinion on scents here. Um, Cause you know, I don't have any affiliates. Um, 
So I, all, all my thoughts on here are just me being honest and this scent is just absolutely beautiful. This might be the one that gets me more into tea scents. Yeah, and I am a buffer, so. Yeah, this is shaving so far so good. I'm excited to try the other gems he gave me that are a little more aggressive, um, but this one is working out. It is providing a nice, comfortable shave, so. All right, good first pass. So I think I don't have too much growth, but I think because of that, I'm just gonna do my usual with the grain and then go right against the grain. Sometimes when I have a lot of time in my off hammer shaves, I'll do an across the grain, but you know, I think, uh, I think I'll just go right against with this and see how that goes. Great residual slickness in the no water. What are your guys' favorite soap labels? Um, Noble Otter's mine. What are your guys' favorite ones? I also like Black Ship Grooming. He has a very underrated company. Kelly Hogan is his name. He's got a cool pirate nautical themed all this stuff. lather here. Probably put too much water in it this time, but in my opinion, too much water is better than not enough. So, oh, Beautiful scent. Man, I, I can't, it's just really, really nice and realistic. I love realistic scents. This one is just a very realistic natural tea scent. I don't really get the strawberry. Um, I guess I kind of get the vanilla, but again, I think the vanilla, strawberry, and bergamot, they kind of act to round out the tea in here. So that's what my nose picks up. Oh yeah, and also, um, I'm not too much of like a razor historian. I like vintage razors. I'm just getting more into them. But if there was anything I said where you guys are like, oh, like that's not accurate or whatever. Um, I do apologize for that. You know, I just really like how gems perform and there's still a lot of research I have to do on them. Um, so, <laughs> I don't know, yeah. I know there's probably people out there who appreciate it way more than I do, so. All right. I think I figured out the angle pretty good here. This one is a little on the mild side, I can tell, but the blade is singing. You can hear it. Yeah, it's pretty smooth. Yeah, definitely a mild, milder gem. Definitely a lot milder than the the push button here. Um, but the other two he gave me, I think, are more aggressive. So I'm excited to give those a try too. Um, I would say this one is good if you're just getting into gems, because it's probably not going to cut you up. Okay. Very nice, very nice. There's another hair from the Amber Air White. Yeah, and I think they've been making gems since like, man, like the early, way early 1900s, maybe even late 1800s. I'm sure a lot of you guys have a lot more gem knowledge than I do, so. Um, yeah, if you want, like, just, I don't know, let me know in the comments.
All right. And I never go against the grain on the chin. Never, ever, ever. It's just way too awkward. Or sorry, mustache. It's just way, way too awkward for me. So I always go across. And then a little bit on the mustache, like near my lip, I kind of will go with the grain a little bit just to kind of smooth it up. And I do have upstairs neighbors, so I apologize about that. All right, that was a really, really awesome shave with the Gem 1912. Really, really pleased with that. Um, even though during some parts of the shave, there was some residual soap here. This is a darn smooth shave. I am really, really pleased with this. So, um, yeah, thank you again, Joe, for sending this Gem 1912 my way. Absolutely gave me a great shave today. Nice residual slickness from the Noble Otter. Um, and also thank you to Eric for sending me the gem push button my way a while back and getting me into gems. Um, I'm just really excited to dive deeper into the world of gems here. This is really, really nice. I get a little bit I missed here. There we go. Very pleased, very nice shave today. All right, get the paper towel here, and we're gonna go use the Kiriti Mati Splash. Nice nick-free shave. I always that's always good when it's nick-free, right? All right, Kiriti Mati. So again, that is an island in the South Pacific, I believe, and that name comes from the the English word Christmas. So this was a Christmas release, and since Dog was getting rid of a lot of his fall and Christmas line. I just really want to smell this one. So this is, I like Doug's Bay Rum creations a lot. He does a lot of great Bay Rums. Um, I love Atomic Age Bay Rum. It's like my favorite Bay Rum. I love Atomic Pumpkin, another one of my favorite Bay Rums he does. Uh, this one is a frankincense and myrrh Bay Rum scent. So I love frankincense and myrrh. I, I am an incense fan and I burn them a lot. So I knew I would like this one, so. Yeah, this one's great. Like frankincense kind of has like that lemony type scent. So this one's kind of earthy and lemony and then you pick up the, the spiciness of the bay in the background. Really, really awesome scent. Uh, yeah, maybe next year, once he releases this again, maybe I'll pick up the set. I don't know, I got a lot of stuff in my den at the moment. So yeah, we're just gonna empty the whole sample here, so. Yeah, I think I definitely pick up that, like the kind of lemoniness of the frankincense. And now I'm getting more of the myrrh. More, myrrh is kind of a more darker earthier type thing. So I do get the bay in the back of that. I think in most of his bay rums, the bay rum part is strong, which I like. I, I love bay rum. I love the spiciness of bay rum. I know bay rum's polarizing, but I'm a huge fan, so. Doug does have great bait rounds. Well, anyways, guys, I know it's a long video. I'm going to end it there, but thank you again for watching. I appreciate you so much, and I hope everyone has a great week. Take care.